Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. It is currently 9 a.m. in the morning. I am currently in Mascot. I'm not going to the airport. We're not leaving Australia. The reason we're here is because we're doing some shopping for our omakaze today. I say we, but um, I'm meeting a sushi chef here to go do some shopping. Okay, so just some quick context here. I'm meeting with sushi chef Yuta and following him around as he chooses the best produce for his daily omakase. I need to check the eyes. If eyes are shiny, mm. it means uh, fresh. Yeah. It's a gill. So the, usually this color, mm. but if it's not fresh, black or brown. I need to break apart the parts by parts. So, top one, this one is uh, called Dinchira Akami. Here, this is a berry part. Yeah, the called Toro. It's uh, called Chutoro. Chutoro is a medium fatty tuna. So, between the Dinchira and the berry part. So pink part is berry. This one is a uh, back. So, that's Akami? Akami. So, no fat. And then this one is a fat. So this one is a chutoro. Chu means a middle. Ah, uh, okay. It's also this one is a toro, so should be nice. And then do you do anything with the skin? Skin? No, it's too hard. And, uh, ah, right. Nothing. <laughs> oh yeah, that does look very, very hard. Yeah. I started my career when I was 19 years old in Japan. I didn't go to uni. I just started my career in the restaurant in Japan. How long does it take to become a sushi chef? First three years, yeah. just doing rice and cleaning. You can't touch the fish. Just making rice and uh, cleaning like dishwasher or something. Making the nigiri, sushi roll. Right. Four or five years at wow, least. Okay. So maybe eight years. If you wanna become a top sushi chef, I still have to improve my skill, think uh, the training or practice. So, omakase means up to you in Japanese. So the customer leaves it up to the chef to select the seasonal fish or ingredients. You don't need to take a look at the menu. You don't need to choose what we want because the chef know the which one is the best in the season mm, all right we are back at gold class and now i'm going to go for my omakase i've seen the purchase process i've seen the prep process and now this is the part that i'm most excited about we are going to go eat everything okay this is the appetizer we have tempura we've got octopus we've got egg and we've also got beef tazaki with okra as well the octopus is savory it's got like a good umami flavor to it as well This wagyu beef is delicious. Honestly, the sushi is just incredibly fresh. This next one is chawamushi, steamed egg custard with eel, it's got some edamame and shiitake mushroom. Super smooth, super light, very silky, and it's got like a, like a savory flavor to it as well. So 
So this is a sea eel, ocean eel, cuttlefish. Mine's my favorite fish. Is that salmon caviar? Yeah. Mackerel, scallop, paradise prawn, Pacific oyster, bonito, then akami, linchina, chutoro, medium patichina, otoro patichina. First up, mackerel. You don't even need to add your own soy sauce. There's a hint of savouriness. The fish is incredibly fresh, and that rice, it's got the perfect balance of like vinegar, sugar, and salt. Next up, this is the cuttlefish. Personally, I love the texture of cuttlefish, and there's a little bit of wasabi already inside this piece of nigiri. My favorite, tuna. This is soy marinated tuna. The piece of tuna was put into soy and it marinated for about, I want to say like 10 minutes. The rice. I mean, the, the fish is incredible, but the rice, it's like the perfect balance of vinegar and sweetness and salt. Next up is oyster has got that like ocean seawater salty savouriness to it which I love and also hints of wasabi underneath I think more tuna coming our way very soon I always thought otoro was my favourite but I reckon shutoro is a good balance between the kami, which is like the leanest part, and then the super fatty one. I might be changing my mind. The taste for this one, it's more subtle, um, has a slight sweetness to it. And then the actual skin, it's, it's got a nice texture to it as well. Scallop with shisha leaf. Scallop is pillowy soft. And the addition of the shisha leaf kind of brings out the subtle sweetness of the scallops. Little pops of salmon. This is bonito with bonito mince and yuzu pepper on top. You can sense that yuzu the moment you eat this. And then the pepper isn't actually too spicy at all. It's like a tiny, tiny kick. That was delicious. This is paradise from the ants flying up. It's actually got like subtle sweetness to it as well. And there's a slight difference in texture. The ends, where it's got that blowtorch, it's more, I don't want to say crunchy, but it's more got, got more bite to it. Whereas like the front part, it's slightly more soft and chewy. Does that make sense? All right, this next one is Roro and it's the fattiest part. Oh my goodness, it looks beautiful. This one, it just completely melts. <laughs> it just completely melts in my mouth. Oh my goodness. I know I said I preferred like the one in the middle, but I might have just changed my mind again.
This is the tuna and uni hand roll. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite item so far. It's like a combination of everything I love. This nori sheet was fire kit, so it brought out more flavor. It has so many different textures as well. You can feel each of the individual grains in the rice, and then there's the crispness of the seaweed. If there's one thing I can have two of, it would be that one. This is the miso soup. It's got enoki mushroom, it's got fresh seaweed, and this was the one that um, was being prepared earlier with the prawn heads and the prawn shells. Mm. You can definitely taste the flavor of the prawns in here. From memory, Utah was telling me that they put the prawn heads and the prawn shells in the oven, and that gives it a little bit more flavor. I'm drinking this right now, even if I didn't see how this was prepared, I'd be able to guess that there were prawns in this. We've got matcha ice cream with mochi, and we've got, this was something that was being prepared as I was coming in today. There's some like soybean powder, and there is also brown sugar kind of syrup drizzled on top. Mochi is very, very chewy. Ooh, the matcha ice cream is so good. Oh my goodness, this and the, um, the tea, perfect combination. It's not too sweet. I'm gonna finish this ice cream in just a little bit. I'm just super curious about this pumpkin and, and what it actually is. It's like a mashed bean type consistency. It's not too sweet either. It's very, it's a very cute dessert. My favorite has to be the uh, mochi and green tea ice cream. Hands down, the best. All right, just done with the omakase. That was absolutely delicious. I pretty much enjoyed every single element in the course. I can't even re really remember how many courses there were. I put this here once I've counted in the edit. Um, I really enjoy omakase at Gold Class Daruma just because of how like affordable it is. And I always leave feeling full. So dinner came to $150. But for their lunch omakase, it's actually 120 Which, if you compare this to the other prices of omakases here in Sydney, it's, yeah, super affordable. Because a lot of omakases, they kind of start at the higher 100 mark, like at least 180 to probably like 200 something. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. If you do go, let me know what you think. And if you have any other like omakases in Sydney that you've been to and you've really enjoyed, let me know because I know like I'm on a mission to try as many buffets as possible but you know what I might just add all my cousins to the list as well so yeah any other recommendations please let me know I would love to check it out what made you decide to choose this was it Two. yeah I just want to like to eat <laughs> I need to check the flavor or taste this tuna before mm. I serve the customer. Mm. So it means I can eat first time. <laughs> I see. <laughs>